Welcome to part one in case study EX2, where we'll show how to apply key operators in Project Reactor's Mono class. Part one of this case study will demonstrate how to apply these operators in order to be able to reduce, multiply, and display big fractions asynchronously. Both fully asynchronous, as well as hybrid asynchronous and synchronous programming models will be demonstrated. You can find the source code for this example at the link at the bottom of the slide. We're now in my IntelliJ project for case study EX2. Let's start by taking a look at the EX2 class. As usual, this class provides the main entry point into the test program. As you can see, there are five methods under test in this program. We're going to talk about the first two, starting with test fraction reduction async one, which will test an asynchronous big fraction reduction using a mono and a chain of operators that run in the background. In other words, off the calling thread. We'll also take a look at test fraction reduction async two, which tests an asynchronous big fraction reduction using a mono and a chain of operators that run in the background, also off the main calling thread. But in this case, it's a hybrid model because the result will be printed in a timed blocking manner by the calling thread rather than running entirely in the background. Let's go ahead and take a look at mono EX, which is the interesting part of this program where all the interesting functions reside. We'll start by taking a look at some of the fields that are defined here, including S unreduced fraction, which is a big fraction that's given a big numerator, which as you can see is very large, as well as a big denominator, which is also very large. And we use those two values, which are big integers, to make a big fraction that is unreduced. There's also another field called S call, which is a callable where we take two big fractions, SF1 and SF2, which are also large, and we go ahead and create instances of those big fractions and then multiply them together and return the results. The third and final field is called S block time. And this is the amount of time that will be used to wait in the mono block call below in the timed wait call. And here you can see we wait for up to half a second. Let's go ahead and take a look now at test fraction reduction async one. As usual, we start out by creating a string buffer so we can store the results and print them out in one fell swoop in the background. We'll start by using the from callable factor method operator in order to cause a reduction of the unreduced big fraction that we stored at the top in the field and turn that into a reduced big fraction. That computation, like all the other computations in this chain of operators, is going to be subscribed to run in a single background thread, which is created from the single factor method on the scheduler's utility class. You can then come down here and see that the next thing we're going to do is use the do on success action operator to go ahead and log that uh, big fraction that we've now gone ahead and reduced, as well as the unreduced version we had originally. That result is then passed along to the map operator. And the map operator is going to use the to mix string method to transform the improper reduced big fraction into a mixed string. And that's going to go ahead and create a mono to a string. So remember that map is a transforming operator. And in this case, it's going to transform the big fraction into a string. We then take that string. And once again, we use the do on success action operator to go ahead and display that string. And you can see it's also going to say what thread it's being displayed in, which initially will be in the background thread, because everything in this particular method is running in the background. The final operator in this chain is called then, and that goes ahead and returns an empty mono that will be used to synchronize with the async task barrier framework. And that framework, of course, will be waiting for all the other asynchronous computations to complete before returning control back to the calling thread. Let's now go ahead and take a look at test fraction reduction async2. Once again, we use a string buffer to store the results to print them. And then once again, most things are similar here with one small exception. What we do, of course, is we go ahead and take that unreduced big fraction and we reduce it using the from callable factor method operator. As before, that runs in a background thread, which is the single background thread return from schedulers.single using subscribe on. Once again, we use do on success to print out the unreduced and reduced big fractions. And once again, we go ahead and use the map transforming operator to go ahead and convert the big fraction that's been reduced into a mixed string. But this time, we have a, a hybrid model. Rather than running everything asynchronously in the background thread, 
Instead, we're going to have the calling thread block until all the background computations are finished. And it's going to block for up to half a second. Once that is finished, it'll either finish and will be done, or it'll throw an exception, which doesn't happen in this case because the reduction takes place pretty quick and the conversion takes place pretty quick. We're going to end up with a result, which as you can see, will be a string, which will be in the mixed string format. We then go ahead and append that to the string buffer, and then we go ahead and display that by converting the, str the string buffer into a string and then using the big fraction utils display method to display that string. At the very end of this method, we return s void m, which as you can see is just an empty mono. And that's used to indicate to the async task barrier that this computation is finished. Even though we blocked synchronously, we just return an empty mono to pretend like we finished asynchronously. So that's the implementation of these two methods. Let's go ahead and run this test and see what the results are. So as you can see, it's going to go ahead and crank away. We complete all five tests. We're not going to talk about two of the tests. We're just going to talk about the results from test fraction reduction async one and test fraction reduction async two. As you can see, this computation and the results that it provides and displays are all done in the background in thread with the ID 20. So that's entirely done in the background thread. In contrast, this method actually ends up printing the results from the main thread, which is thread one even though much of the computations actually take place in background thread 20. So everything up till we get the result is in background thread 20, but it's actually going to be printed in the foreground thread or the calling thread. So that concludes the first part of our case study EX2 for the mono class in Project Reactor.